Hi, everyone. Steve Adubato. We kick off the program with our media partner, Anthony Russo. Tony, can, can I call you Tony? You are Anthony Russo officially, but Tony Russo is the president of the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey and publisher of Commerce Magazine, our media partner. It's good to see you, Tony. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me on. You got this. We're, we're taping this a few days before the state budget is supposed to be legally, constitutionally established in New Jersey, June 30th. Um, let's get this one out of the way. We don't know what's going to happen with the corporate tax being sunset. Let's not talk inside baseball. What is the corporate tax, A and B? What the heck does it mean for it to sunset? Yeah, so thanks, Steve. Uh, so if a company is, is labeled a C corporation, they would be subject to the corporate business tax, commonly referred to CBT. New Jersey right now has uh, one of the highest in the country at 11 and a half percent. A few years ago, uh, they, they added a two and a half percent surcharge that we understand is going to sunset. That would be a good thing because that would drop us back. It goes away. Sunset means it goes away. Yeah. Sunset means it goes away. But just the two and a half percent surcharge. We still think nine percent is high when you compare it to Pennsylvania, some other states. But at least it's a, it's a move in the right direction where some of our companies will, will get to save money. And just to kind of put it into perspective, the state budget, the top three revenue generators, gross income tax, sales tax, and right behind sales tax is the corporate business tax tax to the tune of about $4 billion a year. So it's a significant number. Right, last time we had the governor, and we will have the governor again in the next few months, the governor has made the argument, and many in his administration have made the argument that New Jersey is very business friendly, and it is becoming even more business friendly. You buy that? Uh, it's a complicated question. Uh, you know, there are a lot of good things about New Jersey, and there are things that still need improvement, regulatory framework, taxes. Uh, I think we could do better. I, I really do. I think we could be more competitive. We could attract more companies, not to say that companies don't come in and start their businesses. But Steve, for every company that we see coming into New Jersey, maybe there are two or three that leave for a lot of reasons. So business decisions are complicated. Where are they going? I'm sorry for interrupting. Where are they going? Uh, it depends on the industry. I mean, a lot of them go to Tennessee, Pennsylvania, Delaware. I think with the advent of technology and technology getting better, I mean, unless you have to physically be in a state, uh, you could probably operate your business remote, right? We've all experienced remote work since the pandemic. Uh, so a lot of companies are looking at their bottom line dollar and looking at the cost of doing business. And if, if you could do the cost of doing business somewhere where it's more cost effective, you know, that's a great business decision to make, right? We hope, CINJ hopes that they stay here because uh, we enjoy having them as members. but. Again, uh, you know, to answer your question, I think it could be better. Uh, and I think there, there could be more that can be done to help businesses stay here and grow here. Right. You mentioned regulatory issues. Let's break that down and get more, dare I use the term, granular. Give us one concrete example of a regulatory, a state regulatory issue um, or a situation that is of significant concern to the business community. Right. So again, uh, getting a little te technical is something called environmental justice, which obviously is good intended. You know, it's to help these communities sure. where maybe these plants, these legacy plants have been around, but they're also located. And there's a lot of, and I'm going to abbreviate the EJ being environmental justice. There are a lot of companies that if you're subject to the environmental justice rules, they just went final earlier this year uh, or actually recently. Uh, a lot of companies have trepidations uh, in, in the sense of how much time is it going to take if I have to build a new plant here or if I have to modify a permit. So I, I always go back to the intent is always good. And I think our companies support the intent of it. And that's community outreach. That's community education, lowering emissions if you can, reducing pollution. But, you know, again, when a business makes a decision, time is a factor. It's it costs money. So if there's no certainty as far as how long it's going to take to get a permit, uh, that could be an issue of getting your permit modified. You know, and again, the department has been very good in, in trying to understand our issues and working with us. And I'm well, sure we're going to kind of go. You mean Department of Environmental oh, Protection? Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, Steve. Yeah, Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, so that's just one example. Uh, and there's a lot going on with elect electrification. I know the governor's energy master plan. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of our companies are worried, quite frankly, what's the, you know, what's the uh, future going to hold in terms of whether you have boilers and other equipment that's going to be electrified. I mean, there's a lot going on on the regulatory side. 
I mean, that's my background. I used to work at DEP, but when I think of it, it's been years since I've seen this kind of activity with the flood hazard rules. And if you don't know what they are, it's going to change development again, rightfully so, because a lot of areas of the state flood. And so if you happen to be in a floodplain, you got to adjust for that. Again, that means money and that means time. So there's a, it, it'll keep our businesses very busy in the near future just to comply with all the different initiatives coming out of Trenton. All right, let me just play devil's advocate here. But those environmental laws, those issues, those laws or those regulations regarding flooding, those uh, initiatives the governor talking about going green and, and, and um, there are certain deadlines that is created in his clean energy plan. And we've done a whole range of programming on that. People who are pro and advocates of it and those who are concerned about it, particularly look at our interview with Senator Tony Bucco, um, who has real concerns about the governor's uh, clean energy initiative. But that being said, there's got to be a balance between wanting to attract business, but also having a clean environment, going green, being concerned about flooding. Is it the regulations or the way the agencies manage the permits you need for the regulations, which is really about inefficiency and red tape, really? Uh, look, it, it's, it's a combination of both, right? It's how the regulations are going to be implemented, but it's also... We can't put our state in an economic disadvantage unless our neighbors are doing it too, right? So whether it's climate change, and again, and I wanna stress this, all the members that I talk to all wanna do the right thing. Obviously they live here, they raise their families here. They want clean air, they want clean water. It's how you get there, right? right? That's always the issue. And it's how, how much is it gonna cost in terms of administrative requirements and studies and permit modifications? And that's where we got to strike the balance in terms of efficiencies and bringing down maybe permit fees and, and things, make it easier to comply and the companies will do that. I think that's really the issue is, is what the cost of compliance is. Tony, before I let you go real quick, Commerce Magazine recognized companies that care. Who, what kind of companies and why is it so important that they show they care in the community? By the way, many of whom are underwriters of our work. Go ahead. Well, I appreciate that, Steve. Uh, we're proud of the fact that we, kind of coined the term companies that care about nine years ago. And each uh, year we ask our companies, tell us about the good things you've done for your community and your you know, local charities. And uh, we collect those stories and we have an uh, independent panel of judges, you know, pick winners and we celebrate them through the magazine, but we'll also celebrate them through a breakfast reception. And we just had that a couple of weeks ago. And it goes from realtors to environmental companies to utilities. So Nice thing about CINJ is we represent all the sectors. Uh, so it's really good to get them all in a room and kind of hear what each other are doing and they learn from each other. And we're proud of that, that we've done that now nine years in a row. That's Tony Russo, president uh, of the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey and publisher of Commerce Magazine, one of our media partners. Tony, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. You got it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, the Russell Berry Foundation, New Jersey Sharing Network, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Hackensack Meridian Health, Valley Bank, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, NJM Insurance Group, and by PSC. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by bestofnj.com. I am alive today thanks to my kidney donor. I am traveling and more active than ever before. I'm alive today thanks to my heart donor. I'm full of energy and back singing in my church choir. I'm alive today thanks to my lung donor. I'm breathing easy and I'm enjoying life's precious moments. There are about 4,000 people in New Jersey waiting for a life-saving transplant. Donation needs diversity. For more information or to become an organ and tissue donor, visit njsharingnetwork.org.